To say that quantum mechanics is abstract would be a little bit of an understatement. Quantum mechanics, one of the reasons quantum mechanics is so difficult to wrap our minds around and to grapple with is because it is so grounded in the mathematics. Now, all of physics, all of physics is grounded in mathematics. Physics is a mathematical description of nature. But quantum mechanics takes this to another level where quantum mechanics is just a set of equations, a set of rules that physicists use to make predictions about how subatomic objects behave and evolve and interact. And just like all of physics, it's all based in the mathematics, but with other kinds of physics, uh, what we call classical physics, there's a picture, a mental picture to go along with that mathematical description where we can pair the actual math that physicists use to do the actual physics and the mental picture that we can envision in our minds of, of how things operate. And from that mental picture, we can usually develop a, a concrete intuition of how things interact and behave. Quantum mechanics, not so much. It is abstract, but this abstraction gives it an extreme amount of power because after all, we are dealing in quantum mechanics with the subatomic world. This is stuff that we literally can't see. With everything else in the macroscopic world, we can see it, we can look at it, we can open up a, a microscope or a telescope and, and we can watch planets move, we can watch uh, molecules interact, we, uh, we, can, we can watch baseballs flying, we can, we can see it with our eyes. And even if we can't directly see it, like in the case of uh, electricity and magnetism, we can see the effects it has. We can take uh, electric wires and see how they move. We, we can take magnets and see how little iron filings arrange themselves. We can, we can directly see the effects of the physics of the macroscopic world. But when it comes to the subatomic world, we don't have that option. We can only uh, infer the existence and properties of electrons and protons and how they interact. We have to guess at it through uh, 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 observations that, that don't come to us easily. So maybe it's no surprise that quantum mechanics is so abstract and that the rules that underlie quantum mechanics are a little bit different than the rules that underlie classical physics. That said, there are some commonalities. Quantum mechanics is a theory of physics. Oh, and because it's a theory of physics, it does share some things in common with macroscopic classical physics. And, and there's three properties of quantum physics that it shares with everything else in classical physics. And one of these is the nature of the state. So in physics, we care about what we call states. If, if I were to do something, like throw a baseball at you, and if I were to freeze a moment in time of that baseball getting thrown to you, and just freeze frame it, and write down everything I could about that baseball. If I wrote down its position, its velocity, its acceleration, its temperature, its electric charge, everything that's relevant to physics, and I could just make a list of that, that is the baseball's state. That is a complete description of everything I need to know or could ever want to know about that baseball. Now, not everything is relevant necessarily to the situation at hand, but it still goes into this state. Now, I can take that with a baseball, which is definitely a classical macroscopic object, and I can also take that with an electron. If I take an electron gun at you and shoot you with an electron and I freeze frame it, and I describe everything about that electron, I have the electron state. So quantum mechanics deals with states the exact same way that classical physics deals with states. The second thing that quantum mechanics deals with that it shares in common with classical physics is the observables. Observables are the properties of an object that I can measure or detect. And this seems pretty obvious, and in the classical world it's totally obvious, but in the quantum world, it's not. But they still share. If I want a physical, mathematics-based description of nature, I need states 
and I need observables. I need things that I can actually measure. And lastly, in quantum mechanics, we have equations of motion. Equations of motion tell us how an object moves from one state to another. So for example, if I throw a baseball at you and I freeze frame it, I list its state, its position, its velocity, its acceleration, everything about that baseball. The equations of motion tell me how those properties are going to evolve with time. So for example, if I take Newton, Newton's laws, which are equations of motion, they tell me how the current position, the current velocity, and the current acceleration, and the under the influence of the Earth's gravity, will cause the state of the baseball to change. So if I advance to the next frame, Newton's laws, those equations of motion, tell me how that state will advance from moment to moment in time. And it's the equations of motion combined with the state, combined with the observables that let me do physics. They allow me to take an initial state of, say, me throwing the baseball or shooting an electron at you, and then predict where that baseball is gonna go, where that electron is gonna go. So quantum mechanics, at its core is a theory of physics. And because it's a theory of physics, it is concerned with the nature of states, observables, and equations of motions. But where things go off the rails in quantum mechanics is the nature of those states, the nature of those observables, and the nature of those equations of motion. Most importantly, a state in quantum mechanics is not what we typically assume a state to be, in classical physics. In classical physics, if I throw a baseball at you, that state perfectly, 100%, without question, describes that baseball. It is complete and total knowledge of that baseball. In classical physics, my state totally, completely, 100% describes that object. But in quantum mechanics, I don't get that option. When I'm dealing with subatomic objects, like electrons, my state is a little fuzzier. Instead of knowing exactly where the electron is, I only know where it might be the next time I look. Instead of knowing exactly the velocity of the electron, I only know where it might be going the next time I look. Instead of knowing the acceleration, angular momentum, a spin state, every, uh, so many properties about that electron, instead of knowing exactly its state, I only know a fuzzy set of probabilities that describe what that state might be the next time I go looking for it. That is the primary difference when it comes to these fundamental principles of physics between a classical state and a quantum state. In classical physics, I know exactly what that object is going to do and be, at least in principle. There's always measurement uncertainty, but that's, that has nothing to do with the foundations of physics. In quantum mechanics, I don't have that option. So yeah, quantum mechanics is weird. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. Like, share, and subscribe this video and do all that normal YouTube stuff. You know what to do and I'll see you next time.